Assalamu alaikum or today topic is theories of ethics. Theories of ethics are broadly divided into two categories of each of which can further be divided into other categories. These two categories are normative theories of ethics and emotive theories of ethics. Both normative and emotive theories of ethics will be discussed in detail in the following slides. Normative theories of ethics. The term normative is derived from the word norm or norma which means norm. So normative refers to determining norms or standard conforming to or based on norms or prescribing norms or rules of ethics. Hence normative theories of ethics deals with the study of norms, standard rules or principle of ethics. Normative theories of ethics can further be divided into consequential and non-consequential ethical theories. Ethical theories. Consequential theories of ethics which is also known as the theological ethics. The advocate philosopher of consequentialism believed that the worth of human action can be determined on the basis of the result or consequences produced by that action. If these results are favorable, the action is thought to be good, while if these results of an action are unfavorable, the action will be bad. So, consequential theories of ethics deals with the result of the action. Theological is from a Greek word theology, theology, which means an end or purpose. New, now important question can arise what type of result and consequences are the consequentialists talking about or what end or purpose determine human action of a normal nature. For the consequentialism, Consequentialism is further divided into hedonism and self-realization. In this video, we will discuss all its further division and its types. Hedonism. Hedonism is derived from the Greek word hedon, which means pleasure or broadly speaking happiness. Pleasure or happiness is a result of human action determines the goodness of that action while displeasure, dissatisfaction or pain determines the badness of that action. For example, an action is good if it gives pleasure or happiness while an action is considered as bad if it gives pain to the doer. Pleasure or happiness is the end of, uh, or purpose of a moral action. As we know that human by their very nature seek pleasure and avoid pain. Another important question can arise whose pleasure or happiness? It is the pleasure of the agent or other or both. Hedonism is further divided into egoism and utilitarianism. Hence, hedonism is further divided into two categories, egoism and utilitarianism, egoism, self-interest. According to egoism, an action will be good if it gives pleasure or happiness to the, ancient, to the agent concerned or it gives happiness or pleasure to, to the doer of an action. Egoism is further divided into two categories of psychological egoism and ethical egoism. Psychological egoism. It says that as human by their very nature are selfish beings, hence they always promote self-interest. Ethical egoism. It, compli uh, it comparatively adopts a positive approach towards self-interest and says that human by nature prefer self-interest not due to their selfish nature, but this is how they are naturally structured. Utilitarianism, which is also known as utility. According to utilitarianism, an action, uh, an action will be good if it gives maximum pleasure or happiness to maximum number of people, including the agent. Utilitarianism can further be divided into two categories: act utilitarianism and role utilitarianism. Act utilitarianism. It says that human always act in such a manner that their action gives maximum pleasure or maximum happiness to maximum number of people rule utilitarianism it says that whenever human acts they act in uh, they act in accordance with a rule which give maximum happiness to maximum number of people self-realization coming back toward the second category of consequentialism which is self-realization is also known as socrative ethics known thyself as the moral slogans of socrates who thought that the most supreme virtue is knowledge as he said that knowledge is virtue. What is mean by knowing thyself or realizing oneself? It means that the realization of one's potential abilities, 
capacities, skills and capabilities. All this is possibly only through the knowledge and once we get that ability of self-realization, we will be in better position to differentiate good from bad. Non-consequentialism, which is also known as the deontological ethics duty. According to non-consequentialism, uh, results have nothing to do with the value or worth of an action. An action is either good or bad just because of its intrinsic, action, intrinsic nature. Result is something which uh, lies outside the act itself. So how can it judge the significance of that action? The term deontological is derived from a Greek word deon, which means duty. So non-consequentialism is duty-based morality. It suggests that it is our moral duty or obligation to do good and avoid evil without looking into their result. The best example of deontological ethics is the moral philosophy of Immanuel Kant, a German philosopher. Emotive theory of ethics, which is also known as emotivism. Emotivism is the moral philosophy of logical position, which is a very important philosophical moment of the 20th century. According to logical positivism, metaphysics, religion, ethics, and aesthetics are pseudo and meaningless. Being meaningless, they are not worthy of philosophical consideration, although ethics is meaningless according to them. Yet it plays an important role in the stability of society. Hence, they have their moral theory of emotivism, according to which ethical terms like good and bad, fair and unfair, just and unjust, etc. are neither facts which can be observed and verified, nor analytical concepts which can be analyzed. Rather, they are emotive terms used to express our feeling and emotion and to evoke, provoke, produce or generate the same sort of feeling in the listener, hence are subjective in nature. So emotivism are subjective in nature. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe.